So first thing that we're going to do now is we're going to set up then for the um, cardiovagal and adrenergic components. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a chest bellows on. Um, one of the things that's important with this is that we're actually looking at those lung receptors. So we really want to make sure that we're going over the chest with these. Um, with males, we say to go over the breast. With females, we're going just underneath the breast line. Um, what we don't want to see is them over the stomach. Um, so we're really trying to look at those stretch receptors in the lungs. Yeah, thank you. And this one's brand new, so it's a little tight. Hey, you lose some weight. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can go ahead and lie back. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to prep for the ECG electrodes. So we're using a, a two-step process. Um, we're going to go first abrade the skin with a little bit of new prep. Again, Jade has already shaved for us, so we don't have to do that. Um, but we'll go over with new prep, which is going to abrade the skin and help with that resistance. Then we have an electrode solution called Cygna Spray um, that we're actually going to put over those and then finally put the electrodes on top of that. Hooks up every patient that goes through our lab. Does all the blood pressure. <laughs> uh. And so there are numerous beat-to-beat -beat blood pressure devices out there. Um, we're demonstrating the one that comes with this system, but just know that there are other devices as well. They all kind of have their inherent things that come with the devices. So um, each one has a little bit different troubleshooting with it and things like that. That you can get that information from the vendors. I went. Oh, um, Is something I can find? Yeah, there it's right hanging up right back there. And you can relax. And we still like to use a standard three lead. Um, I do know that there are some ECG devices now that are four leads that will automatically switch to the best location um, or best lead selection. If that's something you have, go feel free to use it. But um, we like to be able to manually adjust that as we want to. Then we're going to start the, the beat to beat blood pressure device. It's going to inflate the upper arm cuff, get an MBP, and then it's going to try to calibrate the finger sensor cuff to match that as well. And this process takes about a minute and a half, I believe, to two minutes. And during that time, we would want our patient to be as still as possible to make sure that we're not getting a blood pressure higher due to them talking or anything like that. And so you can see that <clears throat> that sequence makes a lot of sense to do the acute sweat first. That way the subject is already lying down. We do the deep breathing. By the time you get to the Vassal maneuver, they've been laying down at least 30 minutes already. And by the time you come to the tilt, they've been laying for 45 minutes already. So that gives you a good uh, baseline, naturally. Now you feel it. Oh, no. I this No, down here. So now we're picking up the arterial pressure. Um, coming from the finger. Next thing, we'll get an upper arm inflation cuff going. Once that's done, we'll be able to start the test. So, 
75 minutes, hour to 75 minutes. If you have two technicians, that's oh, two about technicians. an hour. Sometimes if you have the right patient that's cooperating, that's maybe done the test before, you might be able to get done a little bit faster, it but... depends on if you're, um, you guys are doing 10-minute baselines a lot in right. the lab. So, I, you know, in research, a lot of times it's 10, sometimes it's 5. Um, you're doing a 5-minute baseline. Your baselines add up, but um, we can do it. Kim and I together can do a pretty good test in an hour, hour and ten if you take them to the bathroom and stuff like that. But um, And I'm going to say, and that depends, and I think David's mm -hmm. saying it's if their hands are cold and it takes you 20 minutes to get the penis, then and it, that can happen. And obviously cable management here. It's not ideal from our situation here, but we'll make it work. You want to plug in? How many, how many do you do, how many are scheduled to do? Like you do four in the morning and four, six in the afternoon? Or? Yeah. They have four we, labs and... Right. We run, we run four labs um, and uh, do around 20 patients a day, sometimes a little more, depending on how quickly it goes and how easy each patient is. We may take an extra, but... So one of the things that you said that I did was I positioned um, the, the device up here, which is going to give us our breathing cue and also the cue for the Valsalva maneuver um, over the patient. Um, one of the things we don't want to have, I feel like I'm behind here, one of the things we don't want is to have him moving his neck around a lot after the Valsalva. So we want to make sure that that's in a position where he's not moving around. Again, we're looking at those neck sensors, uh, the barrel receptors in the neck um, with this test as well. We would collect a three-minute baseline. During that time, we would be instructing the patient. So I'll go ahead and do that. Or Tony, do you want to do that? Oh, okay. <laughs> I know it's kind of yeah, it's awkward here. So, um, so we're going to do a series of deep breathing. You're going to watch the sine wave. When the green bar is going up, you'd be inhaling in through your nose over a course of five seconds. All the way up, nice big deep chest uh, breath. And then when it, the bar goes down, you're gonna blow it out through your mouth. We're gonna do it eight times in a row. I'm gonna get a baseline now, resting baseline. And I will tell you when to start, and then we'll do it until I tell you to stop. So a lot of times when you start to talk to them, their heart rate will go up. So um, <laughs> let them get a nice baseline and then just start. Don't start talking to them about, okay, now we're gonna start doing that because then their heart rate's already off and then you gotta start over with your baseline. So I can't. No, nope, that's, we'll go ahead and. Just let me know. Yep. So this is important. It will, as soon as I start it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a little different than what we have. Yeah, this isn't the equipment I, anyway. We just have a metronome that constantly goes up and down, um, so it's actually really easy to instruct our patients because um, they can actually see how much of a breath they're going to be taking in and out. Um, this one will actually get started as soon as we actually tell him, okay, go ahead and start your breath, and then once we hit start, it will go up at that point in time. Um, some, another thing is marking the screen. Um, this system does automatically marks for us, so it's going to put a mark at the beginning and the end of the eight breaths. Um, we like to have it done at the half cycle um, so that we can actually follow the breath in relation to the chest expansion and know exactly where the peak and valley should be occurring. Um, so in some of Dr. Singer's slides and, and things maybe later, or if you're seeing other presentations of this, you might see a mark every five seconds. With this test, you're not going to see that. So we'll get started here in just a few seconds. So Jade, go ahead and take your big deep breath in. I like to do it with them. And I actually do all eight. And feel lightheaded afterwards. No, it actually feels really calm. 
<laughs> the other thing is you can use in, in, in to help coach, out, out, out um, is what I like to use because I don't like to breathe along with them. Um, but it is extremely important that they are getting that maximal breath. Um, and so if you're not coaching them or if you're not paying attention, they'll kind of wander off, right? So they'll start out really good and then kind of by about five, six, they start trailing off. Um, so that's where it's really important as a technician to make sure that we're watching each of those breaths and making sure that they're getting that full breath. Okay, on my hands. So it's on number six. And I've actually had diabetics really wander off and had to call like a respiratory. Okay, so really you need to watch them because after the second, or if they don't get it the first couple of times, you're doing three, four sets and like on a diabetic or somebody that's washing their CTO, CTO out, you, you, CO2 out, you, you'll be able to see it on the screen. They'll have nice big deep variations and then they start to get smaller and they go up like that. And you'll have these guys get lightheaded, and like I said, I've had some issues with diabetics. And so you can see it automatically put that mark on the screen at the start and the stop for us. Um, on here, what you're looking at is the middle graph is the R to R interval, which is just that inverse of the heart rate. Um, I don't know how to, why. <laughs> what color would you like it? No, I can't do it when it's running. It doesn't look like. And I, I will be honest, I'm not as familiar with this version of this software. Um, we use an older version and some homegrown stuff. So we're going to rest, though, for three minutes, and then we're going to repeat that one more time. Some of the other things that are really important is making sure you have the right cuff size. Um, so if you're using the wrong size cuff, um, can either overread or underread the blood pressure, um, just like a normal manual blood pressure would do the same thing. What a minute and a half here yet. And these baselines are also very important. Um, you, some people try to s make them a little bit shorter, um, and we don't. We find that we want to make sure that we're standardized, so everybody's going through the same amount, have the same weight periods. So in just a few seconds, we're going to do that again. So go ahead and begin once it starts, Jade.
Okay, so then what we would do is we'd have Jade rest for one additional minute and then we would move on to the Valselva. I'm going to bypass that one minute here just to save a little time for us.